everybody, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we have another episode of a series here I do on my channel known as What Would Drew Do? Which is essentially where I help you guys out with your design or decor dilemmas. And today we have three new spaces that we're gonna be working on. Now, if you've never seen this series here on my channel, I actually have multiple episodes. I'll put it in a playlist up here for you guys. I think this is like episode six or seven, which is really exciting. Two quick things before jumping on into today's video. The first is that today's episode is kindly sponsored by Helix, which is an incredible mattress company. I will touch on them in just a little bit. And the second thing is for anybody that wants to submit their space for a What Would Drew Do episode, I have a new page over on the website, which I will link in the description box below for you guys. It has all of the information. So if you have a room in your home or just need a little bit of design help, go ahead and submit it using the link below to do so. All the details are over on the site, but I do want to just mention that if you guys send along a video, like a horizontal video of the space with a little introduction of yourself, it's more likely to be chosen for an episode and then also on top of that if you can send a photo of your room just one large overall image the largest photo of the room really helps me the best as opposed to like multiple smaller images so our first space here was sent in by Amanda Brooke and she sent it in for her nine-year-old daughter. So let me go ahead and read what she sent. She said, hi Drew, I love your channel and helpful tips that you post on social media. I would absolutely love some help for my nine-year-old daughter's bedroom. It's a pretty large space and I'm feeling overwhelmed to try to make it functional and all the things below. I would love her room to have a lot of personality. Um, just like her, she's artsy, creative, witty. I'm stuck on whether to keep the room light or go bold. She really, really loves dark green and it needs a fresh coat of paint anyways. Would essentially love your help. So you kind of saw some of the before photos Photos. And as you guys can see, this room is really massive. If I had this space as a nine-year-old, I would be very excited. I'd be running everywhere. But this room, you guys, has a pretty insane change. So let's get started. Now, honestly, I wanted to go all out with this room because I just love a kid's room. I love what you can kind of do with it, make it into just like this like fantasy land vibe. And that's kind of what I was going for in here. And so what I started off by doing was actually go ahead and do a wallpaper behind the bed. And if I have my phone up, it's because I'm looking at my notes of everything, you guys. Do a wallpaper behind the bed and I found this amenemy, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Anemone, amenemini wallpaper from the Home Depot and I think this would be such a pretty backdrop behind the bed. It features that kind of dark green color that she was talking about and it also has a couple other colors which we could pull from to use as accents throughout the space. Now that we have our focal wall which is behind the bed, we're going to do all the rest of the walls as well and I know that she mentioned that the space could be really bold and that's where I wanted to take it. So of course you could leave the walls white if you wanted to and just go in with the wallpaper but I actually wanted to do just like the next step and I added some beadboard to the bottom half of the wall all the way around and if you've never heard of beadboard before it is essentially like a slatted board that just gives a little bit of detail I love the way that it looks and I also feel like it kind of plays to that child element as well it just kind of adds that vibe to the space and then on top of that I would paint absolutely everything kind of that dark green tone that was found in the wallpaper now currently it looks like there is a full-size bed in this room which is totally fine but because today's video sponsor is helix I would suggest maybe upping the size of the bed to a queen just because I feel like it would fit this room a lot better. The room is extremely large and when you have smaller furniture that doesn't really fit to scale, sometimes it just makes the room look off. So if you are in the market for a new mattress, Helix is definitely a great option and I'm going to talk about them a little bit now. About a year ago, my Helix mattress arrived on my doorstep, which I was so excited about because I had just my college mattress for years. Now, how I determined which one was great for me was by taking their sleep quiz, which just kind of asks you a bunch of random questions about your sleeping preferences, you know, what kind of mattress feel do you prefer, if you have any back pain, and just a series of a couple of questions to determine which mattress pairing is perfect for you, and I was actually paired up with the Helix Midnight. I opted for the Midnight Luxe mattress, but the standard line is absolutely incredible as well, but at a slightly lower price point, which is great. But I gotta say, one of my favorite parts about Helix is how the mattresses actually come rolled up in a box and they're shipped directly to your doorstep. It is super easy to set up yourself, and I overall, I just love how it comes to your doorstep and it's in a box. That is crazy to me. I don't know how they get them these boxes, but they do a darn good job at it. Just look how this mattress comes to life in a matter of seconds. It started off as a compressed roll in a box and it turns into a thick, fluffy, comfortable mattress in seconds, really. I love it so much. And every single Helix mattress actually comes with a 10 year warranty and they even offer different financing options and flexible payment plans that is of interest to you. And I have used Helix mattresses. I did this one for my friend Kelsey's makeover in her apartment. I used this one for my grandpa's bedroom who moved in with my 
my aunt and he's 90 years old, you guys, or almost 90 years old, and he loves his mattress so much. Plus, if you're somebody that gets a little bit nervous with purchasing something that you haven't ever tried out, Helix actually offers a 100-night sleep trial so that you can try it out for about three months or so, and if you don't like it, they'll actually come pick it up from your home. You honestly have nothing to lose, and if you're in the market for a new bed, check out Helix. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash drewscott to get up to $200 off your Helix mattress. Of course, changing the size of the bed is totally not a have to, you know, in this situation. And I do want to also mention every single time I preface this in all of the What Would Drew Do videos that all of these ideas are just my own personal ideas and they're not meant for you to have to take them or me calling what you guys have bad or anything like that. Just design ideas to give you some inspo. So I personally would up the size of the bed a bit, go for a queen with that Helix mattress, and then I found this stunning bed frame. I love the tone of wood on this bed frame and I feel like it just gives like this cutesy storybook vibe to the room which I think plays back to all of the other elements we've already added. Something we 1000% need in the space is a rug, something to just ground the bed and also take up a bit of floor space because we have quite a bit of floor space in here. So I found this plaid rug, which again, I feel like is just a cutesy little rug. This is from Target in the Studio McGee collection. I thought this area rug would be nice at the end of the bed. And then on top of the area rug, we can pop a couple of baskets. Or if you wanted to go ahead and maybe do a bench at the end of the bed, you totally could as well. But I figured we can offset the bench at the end of the bed with some benches underneath the window because in her email she actually mentioned that her daughter really loves reading so I thought adding some of these little ottoman style stools under the window would be cute and I opted for two of those but you could also do a longer stool if you wanted to and you probably could also do like a small little settee in this room if you were to go in that direction as well and then to kind of finish up this little vignette of the room over here we just have to fix up the nightstands and the light fixtures so I opted for some longer nightstands now these are from Pottery Barn I believe Leave, and they were a little bit more on the pricier side, but I thought something substantial and a little bit larger would just fill in this wall. It's such a large wall and the pattern, of course, already kind of does that, but I feel like these nightstands really, really fill it in. And then lastly, of course, we added this fun little chandelier. It's kind of like a tassel chandelier, but it's in a pink shade, which I think is really pretty, tying back to our wallpaper and using those colors around the room as accents. Honestly, the current chandelier though is also really cute. You could probably just stick with that as well and get a similar look. But over on this side, we're continuing that beadboard and that green wall color all the way around the room. So of course the closet doors and the bathroom door will also be green. And then a dresser on the back wall. This is from Pottery Barn Kids. Another a little bit of a splurge piece, but I loved the look of it. It just adds vintage charm. And whenever I add these pieces that are a little bit more, you know, high ticket value, I add them more so to show what the look of a piece like this can look like in the space, but then giving you guys the option, of course, to find something that looks similar or matches the vibe a bit. And the last thing I'm adding to this view of the room is just a piece of wall art on the right side by the bathroom wall. I found this really cute kind of gallery print online. I thought adding it to a brass frame would be pretty and popping that on the wall there. And that finishes off this view of the space. So there's not too much over here. We just have the dresser and the floor pillows, some toys and stuff. And then we also have, of course, the wall art as well. And that's everything I would do to this space. That is how I took it from this more white blank open space to this, which just has a lot more personality. I also love adding a darker color to a really large room because a lot of times it just makes it feel a little bit more quaint, a little bit more cozy. When you have a large space, dark colors can do that. It also kind of works in small spaces as well. It's just hit or miss however it works, but for in here, it works really, really nice. I love the dark green. I think it overall just makes this room just feel a lot more cozy. Moving on into space number two, this was sent in by Lone Fox family member Joy, and this is her living room space in her brand new home in London, which first of all, Joy, congrats on purchasing your home, and let me read to you guys what she sent through. Hi Drew, me and my girlfriend Robin are finally moving into our first house together, screaming, which congratulations Robin. Um, this has been a four year long dream for us after meeting in Vancouver and then moving back home to Europe. She's from London and I'm from Zurich. A majority of the relationship has been long distance, so this is their first house they're moving in together, and they just want help on the living room room space, which I actually went ahead and looked at the living room space, and it is a really, really nice space to start out. Joy mentioned that the furniture in this room currently is actually just the previous photo from the people that owned it beforehand, but she thought it would be nice to just include it in there as a reference, and it was really nice because it kind of gave me an idea for how I wanted to orient everything and make over this living room, so let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to preface is that 
I am painting the fireplace, which I know some people might not be a fan of, but I will say in this style of living room and the vibe that I'm going for in here, the fireplace currently and adding built-ins on the left and right side, it just really doesn't work. I feel like the fireplace and the exposed brick in here, it just doesn't really make sense with the crown molding. I feel like there's two different styles of architecture happening, and I want to go ahead and just paint this to make it look more along the lines of one style. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the fireplace black. Now I love exposed brick. I I absolutely do. In here, particularly, I would paint this. Now, this room is perfect to add built-ins. On the left and right sides of the fireplace, we could do built-ins on here. You could do DIY built-ins if you want to, just simple IKEA ones. But I opted to share with you some wood built-ins just to totally change the vibe of this space. I do think adding those built-ins on the left and right side is just going to frame out this entire wall and make it the focal when you walk in this room. The layout of the furniture from the previous owners of the space actually wasn't too bad. Bad. However, I would just go ahead and remove the sofa on the left side and I would actually keep the sofa on the right side. I like the placement there. I think that having an L-shaped sofa is definitely what you need there. And then over on the left side, I would swap that out for just two accent chairs, make it a lot easier to walk around in that space, have the accent chairs be halfway on and halfway on our new rug that we're also going to add, which I'll talk about in a second here. But I do think having the L-shaped sofa will give a bunch of seating over in that back corner and then two additional chairs on that left side will allow you to move them if you need to get around or out of the space. Now I want to do a new rug in here and I found this one from the Chris Loves Julia collection with Laloy. It is such a beautiful rug. I love the kind of checkerboard vibe of it but they're like longer checkerboards and it's just like an abstract linear pattern which I really like and I love the brown tones in here. Oh and I totally forgot to mention that we're going to be mounting the TV above the fireplace. I think that is totally the right move for utilizing the rest of this fireplace. Now in this space I actually want to utilize an ottoman as the coffee table, which I think is really fun in design. It, first of all, it's a circle shape. We're going to mix up the shapes a little bit, and I think having a circle in here is really nice. But the great thing about an ottoman is it doubles both as a coffee table and additional seating if you needed it. And then just three more minor updates to the space. I would go and add in some new curtain panels over at that window, making sure that they're mounted all the way to the top of the ceiling to maximize the height of that wall or visually maximize it. I wanted to pop in a new light fixture as well, so I opted for this more simple one just to not take away from all the elements that we already added. And the last thing that I added in here was just a little bit of wall art to the right above the sofa there. I just thought that this kind of pattern was nice. It pulled in some of the colors that we used as accents in the space and it kind of coordinated back to the rug a little bit, which I loved. And that is everything that I did to this living room. Now we transitioned it from this before to this after, which is pretty extreme for sure. And I know that the styles of them are very, very different. And the thing I really wanted to do in here was kind of find one cohesive theme to go with, which if you wanted to go with more of the brick route, you could totally go industrial kind of urban loft vibe if you wanted to go there. Or you could take it a little bit more where I did, which I feel is a little bit more transitional. But the thing I like about this space a lot is it's pretty neutral. So you can add decor and pillows and accents that change the space consistently. So if you wanted to, you know, after a couple of years, change up your decor palette in there, I think you can keep a lot of your furniture and, you know, details in the room, but just mix up your decor and it's going to give you a whole new look. And we are on to our last space, you guys. This one is actually sent in by Lone Fox family member Abhilasha Sign. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I did see at the end of her email she signed it Abby, so I'm gonna be calling her Abby in the video. And Abby actually sent in her breakfast nook, and she says, Hi Drew, hope you've been keeping safe. My husband and I live in Arizona, and we are buying our first home. We would love your input on reimagining this cozy breakfast nook next to the kitchen. The furniture pictured belongs to the sellers previously, so it's currently empty. Thank you, Abby. And this was just such a simple breakfast breakfast nook, but I feel like it just had so much potential to add a couple of elements just to kind of enhance it. And that is what I'm going to share with you guys. Now, I love the bay kind of window that this space has because it gives you that architectural interest without having to add it, uh, which is great. So really what I'm doing here is just adding some bits of decor. This is probably a pretty quick change. Now, I personally would go in and change the light fixture to something a little bit more statementy for this space because I feel like it's so small and it's like its own little area. We need something really eye-catching and statement here. So I found this incredible pendant light from CB2. It's called the Alvanka Nickel Pendant Light, and I love it. I feel like it just adds such a designer element to it. And I also wanted to change the table in here. Um, well, not change it because she said there's no furniture in there currently. So I opted to add a round table as well. So I opted for the slatted wood round table. 
it was a little bit expensive, but it gives you kind of that element. It also adds interest, and it's not just like a basic round table. I thought this was a really nice one. And I also wanted to add four chairs to this table. I feel like four could fit here for sure. And they're just simple black, like kind of hairline chairs. So I feel like the black is gonna play and contrast off the white walls and curtains and also the table that we added as well. Now, really the only other thing we could change in here is the curtains. So I would totally change the curtains to something more bold, more patterned, more funky, more fun, because it really is what is taking up a majority of the space. A lot of what you're seeing here is the curtain panels. So I think we can have fun with this. Now, I actually opted for some patterned ones. However, the rendering artist couldn't get the pattern into the curtain. So we actually just rendered in a dark brown curtain panel, but I would definitely go for something patterned. So I hope that it kind of gives you that vibe and you can imagine it there. But when I do show you the rendering at the end, it's just a dark brown panel, just to show you a little bit of depth, which also looks beautiful as well. And the last change I would make to the space is just adding a bit of wall art to that right wall. It looks like we have a little bit of space there, so might as well pop a little bit of wall decor to add even more detail and pattern. That's just myself as a maximalist, but of course you could leave that empty if you'd like to. So that is how I transitioned this breakfast nook from kind of a little bit simple to something a little bit more bold and just thought out. I overall think this space looks really nice, and I would love to have seen it with those patterned curtains to kind of see the element that it gives it, but the dark curtain kind of gives you an idea of how that would look in the space as well. And that guys finishes off today's What Would Drew Do episode. I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you guys would like to submit your space for What Would Drew Do, definitely follow the link in the description box below to my website. It has absolutely all of the details to enter your space for a What Would Drew Do series. And also if you are submitting, try your hardest to submit a video of the space as well, like a horizontal video, just so I could share it with my viewers. And then also if you could just introduce yourself, I feel like that's just such a nice element to kind of get a whole picture of the room and the person that's living in it. And I would love to know which of these spaces was your favorite before and after. Let me know in the comment section below. And last but not least, before letting you guys go, do not forget to check out Helix. If you're in the market for a new mattress or you know somebody in the market for a new mattress, I highly suggest Helix. It is my favorite mattress. You can use their sleep quiz. It's linked in the description box below. It'll also get you up to $200 off plus two free pillows, which is amazing. So check the link below for anything Helix. Thank you guys again so much for watching today's video and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye everybody.